You're now listening to Sound Talent Media. Check out more shows at SoundTalentMedia.com. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. I am talking to Chris and Matt from Driftwood Guitars. If you are not familiar with Driftwood Guitars, they build fantastic instruments out there in the panhandle of Florida, and they film it all for YouTube. They do a lot of deconstruction videos from popular makers. They also document their own processes, and they they do a lot of content there on YouTube. As you'll hear, this conversation actually skews heavily towards the creator YouTube side of it, and it gives you an idea of the level of work that has to go into that. I know you've heard it from other people before, but we really dive into what it took for these guys to go from zero to nearly 100,000 subscribers on YouTube these days. It's pretty wild. They'll probably hit it before the end of the year, which is a huge accomplishment because neither of these dudes set out to have a YouTube channel originally. So the story is pretty interesting and pretty unique, and I think you're really going to like it. Speaking of YouTube, Yours truly has been hitting the YouTube pretty hard. I'm putting these episodes out on YouTube every week. So if you kind of like to get your content there, the regular audio only podcast publishes there as well. So you can go check it out there if that's your thing. I'm also putting out the videos for these episodes and I'm working on making my own YouTube videos. I did one recently about how to get free guitars. I've got some more stuff planned There's a guitar inflation one I was really proud of. I thought that was pretty fun because nobody really talks about that stuff. I'm trying to find my voice. I'm working on it, and I know I'm way, way overdue, but I'm actually hitting YouTube in a real way these days. So if you could give me a subscribe, a like, all that stuff, it would help my Itty Bitty channel out quite a bit. So thank you so much for that. And uh, I think that does it. Let's get into this episode with Chris and Matt from Driftwood Guitars. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Tone Mob Podcast, a show about guitar stuff occasionally, sometimes. I'm your host, Blake Wyland. With me today, I have Chris and Matt from Driftwood Guitars. What's happening, fellas? Blake, thanks for having us, dude. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, thanks for hanging out. This should be a a good old time. I've got lots of questions for you guys because uh, I had heard of the channel before we met at the Stumac little dinner thing at NAMM. Um, yeah. But I didn't know too much about it other than, yeah, these guys make guitars and they put it on YouTube. I was like, oh, that, well, that's cool. <laughs> Congra- I mean, yep, that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right, yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, the end good, of the story. Good show, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was pretty quick. Let's, yeah. Uh, let's do anything for my watch Tag time. It and bag it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the retention on this one was like, outstanding. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, well, everyone watched 100%. <laughs> 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 but, you know, Obviously, there's a lot more to the story, all joking aside. So, I, you know, I know you got started in sometime around 2006, 2007 uh, in that ballpark. But, yep. you know, the YouTube thing came much later. But what's the whole story? This You didn't just wake up in this situation one day. There was a, there was a no, process here. So it how is did that the, happen? It is the proverbial frog boiled in water kind of a situation for me because... It started with me. Um, I was in the military station in Alaska. I really wanted to get into woodworking. Um, And one day the idea that I could build a guitar was presented to me as just like the concept of making an instrument. And it blew my mind because I was at the time playing like singer songwriter, like open mic nights and playing a lot of acoustic music. And that idea of like being able to get into a hobby of woodworking, but doing it, building guitars, uh, was what blew my mind and and so i built like two guitars back then like total you ever seen like the log that les paul built oh yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> it's kind of like that <laughs> it's just a really really bad couple of guitars um, it was an actual log exactly like, from a hillside in, in, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and and decided to get out of the military move back to this area which is where i'm from um panhandle florida just for the reference uh and Always had in the back of my mind that, yeah, I'm going to get back into building guitars. But I was going through a divorce, was living in an apartment, couldn't build guitars in an apartment. And then slowly uh, got myself into a situation where I had a one-car garage in a, in a, in a, uh, you know, in a townhouse. 
Uh, so this, I really kind of started building the guitars with the, the D on the headstock for Driftwood Guitars in 2010. It was really when that okay. that moment happened, because 2006, 2007 is when I built my first guitars. Um, but it was really just gave it a name because my last name's Alvarado. Um, and everybody always calls me Chris Alvarez as it is. And I was like, I can't call him Alvarado Guitars because I know how this is going to go. I, yep. <laughs> some, yep. There's some sort of weird cease and desist yeah. letter for that kind of scenario. I, I've, had, I've literally had somebody years ago be like, yeah, I've played one of your guitars. And they were talking about an Alvarez. <laughs> but uh, so, so, yeah, I started building, um, uh, playing music full time. And where we live, you can play music seven nights a week if you want to. You make a good living doing it because we live in a touristy area. So I was playing probably five to six nights a week at the time and building just for fun and slowly started building them for friends and then people started buying them um but it really i'm trying to give him the super cliff notes because matt came on board in 2020 right it came yes out of covid right yeah yeah uh 2021 i think actually yeah yeah your third year uh yeah yeah so 2021 same stuff. Uh, but Matt, Matt, Matt and I have been playing music together for over a decade now. We've known each other for a long time. He had gone to school for mechanical engineering. And uh, one day around Christmas, he was hanging out and we were talking about, maybe you could come on. And then about a, two weeks later, he said, How, are you serious about that? Taking it back to the YouTube, about six months before that, I had uploaded a video to YouTube, knowing that I really wanted to start a YouTube channel. Um, put up the videos on the internet. Uh, and nothing really happened. But then about six months after Matt started working with me, it was like, man, we're getting like all kinds of hits on the website, and I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, for, for the record, I just want to say that no part of this is part of my job description, by the way, because I was excited just to kind of be doing stuff that I went to school for loosely, like, you know, uh, manufacturing, engineering, that kind of thing. And I was excited to come work for him. And I, I think the original game plan was I was mostly going to be running a CNC machine for was, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, it was about six months in, we had a video that started to get some traction. And coincidentally, uh, Chris has been friends with um, Rhett Scholl for, for, since before Rhett was even into YouTube. And so uh, kind of uh, in, in a roundabout way, we had a video that started to get some traction. We were like, is YouTube kind of a thing? And then we talked to Rhett and Rhett was like, yes, obviously Rhett would know. He's like, yes, YouTube is a thing. You should, you Cancel should do that. Cancel everything and do yeah, YouTube. Yeah, and so, uh, Rhett, yeah. Rhett's responsible for uh, more than one channel out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, Hardcore it's, enabler. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, they're just some small, small music channel, Rick Beato or something. Exactly, he might have had something to I do. Know. With that, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, like he, but like Richard, not just that, but the, uh, Mythos Pedals, like you guys, like yeah. there's a lot of roads that lead back to Rhett being like, yeah, you should really start a YouTube it. channel. Yeah. Yes, because Matt and I started prototyping this electric guitar and like the YouTube channel at this point started getting some traction, but we really weren't putting a whole lot of effort into the system because for us, it's a little little weird that a lot of all of our friends that are YouTubers, they're YouTubers. And so their job mm -hmm. is to shoot videos. And so they have like the time during the day is to shoot videos. So like for us, it was difficult to justify, should we break away from building guitars to shoot videos? Videos are what's going to allow us to get the customers to build the guitars. It's chicken and egg situation. And our phone call with Rhett, he was like, listen, stop everything you're doing and just go all in on YouTube. And for about a year and a half, we went so hard in the paint, so hard. We were doing four videos a week, yeah. just wow. slinging content, which four videos a week for two guys, like still trying to build guitars, like Matt learn from whole cloth how to even hold a camera let alone shoot with a camera and then got super into photography and videography and yeah and it worked it, it really kind of blew up the business in a good way that now we can you know we're making a living building guitars uh it's been a lot of <laughs> really hard stumbles along the way but uh that's the really cliff notes versions of how we got to where we are now um still just two guys building guitars in a converted two-car garage um you know not not with a proper you know like factory a lot of people hit me up and like can we do a factory tour <laughs> sure <laughs> it takes, it takes, takes about minutes. 30 seconds <laughs> yeah here's the shop <laughs> but it's been interesting mm -hmm. because we're doing this super like old school handmade high-end acoustic guitar building and electric guitars and but using youtube uh solely basically as our entire marketing uh platform you know pretty much that and social yeah. media because uh, before YouTube, it was just Instagram, um, and I was using my elaborate inlays as a way to kind of like hopefully get people to go, wow, I got to learn more about these, you know, mm -hmm. and YouTube's made it so much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can I can relate. I've been doing this podcast for a long time now, and 
I've always threatened, like, I'm going to do more on YouTube. I'm going to do more on YouTube. And the listeners have been like, yeah, yeah, I've heard you say that for like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, seven years. But this year, uh, it finally all clicked, like, and not hard enough. You know, it was like going to Gear Fest and meeting a lot of, I'm being the only, like, audio specific podcaster there. Yeah. Where it was like, oh, everyone else has a YouTube channel. Everybody. Like, yeah. <laughs> everybody everybody else has one and everyone is and I'm I'm seeing the benefits of having one and I've known about it for a long time. Yeah. But for me, I'm just and the type of content I make, I'm I've been such a stick in the mud for so long. I'm like, well, I wouldn't watch a video where it's just a bunch of dudes sitting around talking. Like yep. well, I, I'll listen to that while I'm doing other things, but I'm not going to sit down at the screen and watch that. So why would sure. anybody else? That was my thought process for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and, Meanwhile, uh, Joe Rogan seems to be doing okay with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> while <laughs> all of the biggest <laughs> podcasts on the planet have a video component. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, so, I, my sister-in-law was just visiting. And just she, as proof of concept. Yeah, my sister-in-law was just visiting, and she told me that her and her husband, they don't, they don't even have cable anymore. They sit and watch podcasts on YouTube. That's mm-hmm. what they watch in their living mm-hmm. room every single night. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Dude, you've been doing I this mean, since I... 2015, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So was yeah. it like, was it just you and Mark Marin at the time? Like, did you teach Mark Marin how to do the podcast? <laughs> like... <laughs> you know, weirdly enough, um, I wasn't even the first like guitar podcast. Some people wow. think that I was, and I, I wasn't. There was a 60 Cycle Home had gotten started just a little bit before me. Okay. They started before Ryan was doing his like YouTube kind of more traditional YouTube specific stuff. He was doing um, podcasts with his dude Steve over on, and um, they were just kind of putting them on YouTube as a secondary thing. At least yeah. that was my understanding of it. Um, and the like, let's see, what else was going on at the time? There was a guy that was just called like the Guitar Podcast, and I listened to a couple episodes of that, and it was just a guy in his truck. Like, okay. t- t- like with his phone, I, I don't know, just driving. He's like, just talking about guitars in his truck. But it, it, which I mean, maybe could have been a cool thing, but I think it fell off after a little bit. And then um, he just ran out of gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some say he's still somewhere out there in Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> and who was and the other and one? And then Chasing Tone was the other okay. one that uh, was going at the time, which was Brian Wampler's podcast, which I climbed on as the other host at. at episode 100 and so i've been doing kind of two shows okay aud- that were audio only since about that time um definitely not the first guitar podcast but i think it was the first guitar interview podcast it's from what i can tell it's the longest running guitar interview podcast so i don't yeah. know if it was the first one but it was definitely the one that has been around the longest as far well, as i can tell cool. and it's interesting because it's it's kind of like for us with the youtube thing is, is we noticed that it's a very old fashioned world, especially guitar building. Guitar playing is can be a very old guy world too, but guitar building, it's like skeletons. <laughs> like it's like it is like yeah. it is like the old like a lot of these guys who who are big builders, they don't even have internet still. There's so many people that like just don't they're off the grid totally. And mm-hmm. so like we knew right out of the gate, like, man, if we could like get onto YouTube and present this old world way of building guitars, but in a like young and kind of like more high energy, like instead of it being like this old house kind of a feel. And it's like it was ripe for the picking. And I, and it's you've seen it happen on just YouTube has done it for the guitar world too, like JHS and like Rat and all those guys. Mm-hmm. Are like it's fun and exciting, and there's ways to get your 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 fingers involved in that world now that 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 you didn't used to ten years ago. You yeah. Know. Yeah. God, 2015 is almost 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, yeah. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing to see because YouTube, I remember when I would go over to my friend's house, it was like 2010 probably, and he was like, everything's on YouTube. I'm like, really, everything? And he's sure like, about? wow, it does feel like everything is on yeah. YouTube. But uh-huh. seeing it shift from this kind of, internet-y, you know, thing where it's like you kind of had to be an internet person to where my grandpa, who's in his 80s, has his favorite YouTubers. Yep. It's been a really interesting it transition. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because that's <laughs> yeah. all I watch. That's mostly Matt's. That's your full consumption of video is mostly YouTube. I, right? I yeah, I I have a smart TV in my house and I have Netflix, but I really yeah, yeah. Uh, I spend way more time on YouTube than anything else. I don't watch any guitar YouTube for the most part. I watch. I'm starting that's to. Watch so more. weird to me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That's like ninety percent of the YouTube I consume these yeah. days. Never take your own supply. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. What type yeah, of YouTube I guess I sh- do you like to watch? Me? See, that's yeah. the thing. I use YouTube like an old man. Okay. I I go, I figure out how to fix my dishwasher, and I leave. <laughs> okay. I don't I very rarely get sucked into like a YouTube rabbit hole the way wow. some people okay. will. Okay. Yeah. Um it's it's a I don't know. I, I still do it that way. The, the last YouTube hole I got sucked down though, um it does happen once or twice a year, and it was uh watching a video on all the different versions of Godzilla. So, you know, I guess that's that what seems... YouTube's there for. They're oh, ready man. for you whenever you get <laughs> yeah. water's fine. <laughs> Thanks, by the way. The, the, you, there goes my evening. I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's way more than I remembered. Like, way yeah. more different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and uh, for the uh, the people who are watching this on YouTube, the audio people won't care. Um, we keep there's an icon that keeps popping up occasionally on our string, our screen that's a thumbs up. I just I now discovered that that's a thing. Uh, I'm told okay. it's built into to, to iOS and and Mac OS, and I'm not sure how to turn it off. Yeah, so, I see it um, popping up on my face every once in a while. Okay. It's, yeah, it's it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be gesture based, but I haven't figured out like what the gestures are that Is, trigger it. it. Is it? It's some AI. Thing like you'd think on. it was something. <laughs> you guys were just sitting there, and this thumb just kept pop- popping. Up. I don't know. The people listening to this podcast I, couldn't see me, but I'm literally flat. I'm now. I'm trying to make it happen. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> it, it first happened when I was interviewing Landon Bailey a couple weeks ago, and now I'm just like, I don't know how to turn this stupid thing off. <laughs> and YouTube hasn't given me the answer yet. So, um, yeah. But like and thumbs up if you like this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll figure that out one of these days, maybe. See, the YouTube yes. video just has a small drinking game with it. Every time a phone pops up, you take a, take a sip, right? <laughs> I'm, boy, just, we're only 15 minutes in. People are yeah. going to be. <laughs> <laughs> roasted by the end uh, of this. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's another one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think I'm noticing a trend. For some reason, it seems to like it when you guys do it on your arm. Matt had uh, it on his arm. I wonder. And now, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. This is fascina- fascinating stuff for everybody. Fascinating, yeah. absolutely riveting content here. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> when Rhett was like, hey, you guys got to go in on this. This is, this is a great thing for any business. Did you, were you like, okay, dude, I believe you. Or at some point during the year, was it like, we're doing four videos a week and it feels like it's going nowhere or did it take off immediately? What's the, what was the. So, so there's something that there? I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, handle this question just cause I feel like I have the most perspective on Chris's psyche at any one moment. Um, <laughs> is it okay if I tell them about your Please. ADD? Yeah. Okay. Chris is one of the most, uh, high functioning but incredibly ADD people I know and it's it's a beautiful thing because whenever he hyper fixates on something it, it, that's it that's watch out yeah that watch out and uh, the biggest the biggest thing that ever happened to Driftwood was us learning that whenever Chris is interested in something he will do the work of eight men in <laughs> mm-hmm. an eighth of the time yeah. right and so the best thing that we've ever done as far as Driftwood goes is just like trying to make sure that wherever our north star is it's always something that that we're both excited about because I, I have I have elements of that too, um, but Chris is uh, just uh, he's a machine whenever he gets interested and so it was literally he called me I was at a gig and he said dude I just had the greatest phone call with Rhett we're doing YouTube now and I was like all right and I, this was still early on so I didn't really realize exactly how much of an eight second bull ride that was going to be <laughs> but then like I showed up the next day he already had uh, he already had everything picked out. In our um, uh, B and H, uh, like you oh, know, yeah. yeah, he already he already had all the stuff we needed. He had it all picked out. He'd been, I think, he probably didn't sleep at all that night. He'd been watching reviews on on gear, so he had a gimbal picked out, a camera, uh, all the SD cards, and he was like, "All right, this is happening. Let's go." I was like, "Sweet, we're off." Yeah. <laughs> and bought, that was pretty much it. <laughs> bought Matt a, um, a subscription to Potato Jet, another YouTuber. He does a video yeah. channel on like how to get to. To, to learn about videography and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Matt did the whole course. But uh-huh. Yeah, no, really. I call – backstory on Rhett. Rhett and I, he used to come see me play when he was in high school. His family would vacation in this area, and they would they would see me play music at, at different venues in the area, and they'd always come see me play. Um, Rhett was still just playing. He was in high school, you know, not really even 
getting, he was into music, but not like, you know, obviously like thinking it was a career path. Uh, and then I actually played at Eddie's Attic years ago in Atlanta and, and his dad like made the whole thing work for me. Like I take, took care of me while I was up in Atlanta and all that stuff, but hadn't really spoken to Rhett since then. And this is God, this is probably eight years between these two events. And like, in the meantime, I'm seeing Rhett show up, like, you know, his channel starting to get bigger. He'd hit a hundred thousand subscribers. I'm like, Oh, this is cool. Like Rhett probably didn't even remember me. So anyway, I, I <laughs> this is when this phone call happened. I hit up his dad through Facebook, and I'm not even super active on Facebook at the time. Now I'm not on at all, and it's like, hey, like, you think that you don't know if you remember me, but like da 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 da. And he's like, oh my god, yeah, of course I remember you. Like I was like, I'm looking to try to get a hold of Rep because we're prototyping this electric guitar. Uh, nothing to do with YouTube. I'm just prototyping his electric guitar. I'd love to get the guitar in Rhett's hands. I don't care if he puts it on his channel. I'm not trying to just to get a free promo here. I just want him to, to get his thoughts on it, you know? So he's like, oh yeah, I'll give you Rhett's number. So I, Rhett called me, this was on the way home from a gig, and I pulled off, I still, every time I drive past the parking lot, I think about it, but I remember Rhett called me, and it was right before I was gonna lose cell phone service, because we live out in the middle of nowhere, so I pulled into this parking lot, and that's when he was giving me the, like, listen, this, 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 this are all reasons why you should get into YouTube, and most of them were like, you're, the best case scenario is that you own a company, or you have a business where you're making a product YouTube is an opportunity to, to, to talk directly to your clients. And uh, yeah, that's when that happened. And uh, Rhett and I have rekindled our friendship since then. And we talk all the time now. And like, it's been really, really, really absolutely crazy. But yeah, you were at your question about, did we see an immediate re um, return on our investment? Um, no, although uh, in those early days, we were having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the big return on it, Chris and I are both really, really passionate about learning. And we both really loved uh, our deep dives into things. And uh, uh, as soon as I got excited, I, you know, I, I was staying up late watching YouTube videos on video editing and, on um, and the algorithm. And yeah, all and 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 we both were also, as we said before, like even before we were trying to be active on YouTube, we were both big YouTube consumers. And so uh, for us, you know, it it was just something that was really fun and really exciting and really new. And I think we knew enough from watching YouTube to know the type of content that we wanted to make. And that gave us a little bit of an advantage. I think a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to, uh, they spend a lot of time trying to figure out what it, what their vision is and what their voice is on YouTube. Instead and, of push and record. Yeah, and we, we had some of that in the beginning, but we also, um, we knew that we wanted to not just use uh, our cell phones. We, you know, we, we started off on GoPro, but we very quickly wanted to go and do more and to be bigger make and, and to product. have, yeah, to, to make a better product and to put production value into things. And yeah, we wanted to make a product that represented the quality of our instruments, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, we also mm -hmm. knew that we wanted to kind of say the things that we knew that all these people were saying behind the scenes, but you'd never see people say on camera. You know, luthiers would you about know, like guitar making, yeah, about guitar building, yeah, like getting rid of some of the 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 snake oil mystery about you know if I'm a guitar builder, I'm like some sort of black magic wizard who like you know puts a spell on a piece of wood and brings the tone out in it. And it was like like let's do like let's pull back the curtain and reveal Oz for who he is. He's a guitar builder. I'm a guy just like you, and I'm just super into guitars and like I'm interested in trying things and trying to. I'm never gonna know and fully master what makes a guitar tick, even though it's all I do all day, every single day. I'm either building guitars or playing guitars. Um, and yeah, so what I always say about when we started the channel was that at first it was so difficult, especially if you look at videos before Matt came in. I would get on camera and be like, hello, my name's Chris. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And they're so vanilla. And all my <laughs> friends and family would see him and be like, man, I liked your video, but like, Dude, that's not your personality. And then Matt started doing these videos with me and it was like instantly he made me myself. And at some point along the way, I stopped looking at the lens and seeing a camera lens and I started seeing the thousands of people. And it became so much easier because I you have to, it takes a lot of work to just feel like you have a little bit of community. I think once you hit like thousand, two thousand subscribers, you're like, oh, okay, there's people there. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it becomes easier to feel like you're talking to somebody, at least somebody cares. And the other thing mm -hmm. that happens is you pay attention to the comment section and the, the viewers guide you to the direction that you need to go. They start to kind of, you only need to come to the table with like five to 10 really good video ideas. And after that, you can kind of just trim your sails to what the audience is wanting, what they're hungry for. Mm -hmm. Um, that can get, you can start to drink your own Kool-Aid and that can go bad if the channel gets too big. Uh, you know, you always gotta be like trying to think of yourself too, but yeah, it's, that's kind of how it got to where it's at now. And it kind of blows my mind that we just hit the 75,000 subscriber mark and like, we're going to probably hit hundred K this year. And like, it's weird now, like we haven't put a video out in a month 
but we have I think like almost 400 videos. It's something crazy like that. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of videos, and they kind of now without if we don't have the time to put effort into the system, the system has enough momentum that it keeps going. So you know we continue to get a good amount of subscribers daily without putting you know energy into the system. Now there comes a point where okay, we really need to put a video out because it's dropping off. <laughs> uh, but mm -hmm. it's been, it's nice to know that it's one of the few things that you can put a whole bunch of work into something and it will continue to pay you into the future, which is a really nice thing as opposed to like a guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, then that was, that was a struggle for a long time for me too. Was, I just had this vision that I needed to do videos that like, oh, I need to do demo videos. I need to do, you know, cause I'm really into pedals and I got all these pedals. So that should be the thing that I do. And it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, and they mm. did okay. But like you mentioned something important there is like trying to find your voice or trying to find what you do. It can take some time. It can take and years. As, <laughs> as dumb as it sounds, it took me a while to realize like I already found the thing that I do. You just need to take the extra step of, yeah, you know, grabbing the video portion of it and you getting it, it over there. Mm -hmm. like you already you, fi you, you figured it out a long time ago. You just yeah. like why for some reason in my head YouTube was different. Yeah, and I'm like it's well, not. There, there are millions, maybe billions of views happening every day on a similar style like format. Yeah, just in a different subject. For sure. So and that's and just on can, one Mark Rober video. And you video. can think and you can, exactly <laughs> that's what Mark Rober video that came out ten minutes ago. Uh, yeah, you can think that it's this dumb idea because you wouldn't consume it. But yeah, there's so many people there, and uh, yeah, it's it's weird. Like for us, even like you would think that our most popular videos are videos about building guitars. They're our worst performing videos. We're guitar builders, but the people tune into our channel more to hear our opinion on factory made guitars they like because they go oh you're not just a guitar player you're a guitar builder so what do you think about xyz and we never set out to be a guitar review channel and we're not i don't i still don't know necessarily exactly like if you could give me the elevator pitch of what our channel is but 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 what do our best views are modifications to your existing guitar or us talking about and making commentary on guitars that exist in the market space um, and it's been interesting to, cause there's niches inside niches. Like, yes, there's, there's the entire genre of music on YouTube, but then there's the genre of guitar inside music. And then there's guitar playing and then there's like the equipment and then there's guitar building, which is a tiny sliver of a sliver of a sliver. Mm -hmm. So like we've mm -hmm. found that, you know, you have to be, you have to look at your analytics on your channel and stuff that you put up and you'll find that as your channel grows and as you put out more content, you can look at like your analytics and say, what video performed really well? And you have to step back and try to think of like, okay, why is that video different than this one that did terrible, you know? Mm -hmm. And this one, and uh, you, typically the video you love the most is the one that performs the least. And the one that you sure. thought that was, you were phoning it in uh, is the one that kills it. And this is like when we were at NAMM talking to all those giant YouTubers, like it was universal. The videos you think they're going to suck are the ones that kill it. And if you like spend months writing out like a script and like you know exactly what this video is going to look like, it's just like radio silence. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's that way. Hi, I'm Vincent, and I'm here to talk about the Maris Mercury X. My dad's always going on and on about how cool Maris is. He really went off on one about the Mercury X the other day. He said something about a 4,800 hertz sample rate and 99 preset locations in 33 banks and something along the lines of the most advanced reverb pedal ever devised by man? That's all true, but I only care about one thing. This pedal sounds sick. So make sure you check out the Mercury X and all the other fine products at maris.us, as well as fine retailers worldwide. All right, Dad, all now right. can I have my pocky? How exactly do artists get their music on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, all these services? How in the world do you get your music there? Well, in the past, you had to use something called a record label, but these days you can use DistroKid. DistroKid is the absolute easiest way to get your music up on streaming services, and it's the most affordable way to do so. Not only do plans start at $22.99 for the entire year, that's less than two bucks a month, 
DistroKid also does not take a cut of your streaming revenue, unlike some other services out there. Even better if you sign up by going to ToneMob.com slash DistroKid. That's ToneMob.com slash DistroKid. One more time, that's ToneMob.com slash DistroKid. You'll get 30% off. That's right, 30% off. They're already extremely reasonable prices. So go to ToneMob.com slash DistroKid and get your music out there. We are brought to you today by Sweetwater, specifically the Gear Exchange. You may have heard about this. This is a place where you can go to buy and sell your used gear. Maybe you got a pedal over there that's just kind of collecting dust. Maybe there's something you've been eyeing from the Sweetwater catalog. Well, right now is a great time to turn that unused gear into something you're actually going to use. Even better, if you sell on the Gear Exchange, you can keep 100% of the sale as long as you choose a Sweetwater gift card as your payout method. That is not too shabby, because let's be honest, most of this buying and selling we do is just to fund new gear purchases, and that is a great way to reach a wide variety of customers and keep 100% in your pocket, or rather, on your pedal board. So go check out the Sweetwater Gear Exchange and turn that unused gear into something that's actually going to help you write that next huge riff. Well, it uh, this is a callback. Um, uh, the I think was it last week's episode about is clickbait bad? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you guys made an excellent point in that um, that you know it, as long as the clickbait delivers, but that's the videos that do well. We, we've realized now if we're going to put out a video, we need to already have the title and the thumbnail already in our heads, and it's it's, it's the videos that we whenever we take that time to have that first uh, spark or impulse of energy, that video is always going to do better than a video, even though it's something that we're really passionate about and something that we might be interested in. If we don't have the the good catchy title and the the good thumbnail for it, then yeah, there's yeah, almost no point. Thumb t- thumbnail and title is apps. It's 90% of the work on yeah. YouTube. That's it. It's true. At least <laughs> for now. It, it, <laughs> I, I don't know if that'll, I don't know if that'll change either because you got to think about your own consumption habits. Yep. Like yeah. how often do you click on something? I'm sure it happens, but how often do you really click on something that is boring looking. Yeah. You well, don't, here's you the don't. real thing. There was, <laughs> yeah. This was the, yeah, this it's was true. What, what screwed my mind up was when Matt and I, especially talking to Rhett, and Rhett made this point to me. He goes, think about it. Because I, I typically consume YouTube either on my phone, an iPhone, or my iPad. And so you mm-hmm. know what that looks like, just the, the app it does. And he's like, think about when you're scrolling. Are you looking at the title or are you looking at the thumbnail? And like, holy... I'm looking at the thumbnail. I almost yeah. never read the actual title of the video. I'm just, because that's two separate things. And Matt and I treat them very separate. What do we want the thumbnail to say? What do we want the title to be? And mm-hmm. Because they both serve two different purposes. And when I started to realize what my own personal consumption habits were, so you start to think, okay, why do I feel the urge to click on this video? What is it that's enticing about it? And that's when, that that right there is, that's so much more valuable than like, having good lighting or a good camera or a good idea. Just having, yeah. just having knowing that you've got a, you're, you have to put a proposition out to a viewer that says, why should you click on this one more than the one right after it, you know? <laughs> and right. you better deliver. And you better deliver. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and you better deliver in the first 30 seconds something that makes you say, stick around because it's going to be worth your time. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's that's so much harder than than you think. And maybe that's why videos that you you don't put a whole lot of thought into do well because you're, you're, you're kind of just like, you're like excited about it and you're like it just being organic. You know, I don't know. It's fascinating to me how that works. Yeah. Unless you're Mark Rover. Right. Spends months. Yeah, I think there's a, yeah, that's not a, a hard and fast rule. I think that's more anecdotal because I, I see a lot of videos that people do put a lot of time and effort into and then they do still do incredibly well. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, but, it's a very, it's a very strange thing because I don't think I, I've long felt like, oh, the less effort I put in, the better these things seem to do, which is, which is weird. Uh, but, I had to really take a step back and think about it. And I was like, that's not entirely true. Like my best performing video was one I put a lot of work into, Sure, Um, you know, so it, it's, I feel like that sometimes because like, Oh, I worked so hard on this song. And that doesn't mean that you worked as hard on the video, you know, or that you've Mm -hmm. really thought about it in the way that, uh, you typically would. And, you know, it's, it's not all about getting, all of the views. Sometimes you just no. gotta make stuff because that's what you want to make. And and we have yeah, passionate we have passionate mm-hmm. viewers 
for some some of our series that are very unpopular series, but the people that are into those specific series, we built. I'm building a guitar out of the stage from the original 1969 Woodstock, and like we thought for sure, this is just gonna be like, it's just it's guitar smut. Like it's just beautiful. There's no talking. It's me building this guitar, man. In a lot workshop. of ASMR kind of thing. Yeah, and and it's mm -hmm. beautifully cin cinematically shot. Like and. And like we're gonna put it up there, and like people are gonna love it. Relaxing really, music, the whole night. Yeah, I think yeah. we put out five or six of them. Seven. Seven. Yeah. And uh, we've actually haven't uploaded one in like over two years, I think. But yeah, because they they just never they never did. I don't know. That it was any never of them... there was never any juice for the squeeze, yeah. and and uh, you'd put in hours of work in editing. Yep. And then you would put it out there, and then you know. The, I don't the... think any of them have even got ten thousand views yet. Uh, but the people, or, a but, couple of them have. But, but we do yeah. get comments like, "When are you going to put out more of these? You're killing me. I love this video series." You know, so mm -hmm. there's always somebody who's going to be into it. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you'll have a like our most popular video. It'll probably be our first million view video. Like literally, I was getting ready to do a repair on a guitar, and Matt was like, "We should get that on camera." And it, yeah. it took us like 30 minutes to shoot the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and it was edited in like probably two hours, and like up, and it's it's just it's just it destroys every other video we've ever put out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So how much has, I mean, obviously we've been really focused on this one topic, but how much has this actually impacted your business overall? Obviously you guys are, you know, monetized. So there's a little bit of incentive to make videos there on its own outside of the downstream impacts, but how I'd much has this impacted the biz? It's the, and not hy hyperbole to say it's the single biggest thing thing that the biggest business decisions that I've ever made, like the most impactful business decision that I've ever made. Yeah. I, I, th I think the thing that a lot of people don't always see at face value about YouTube is that we're out here, you know, making these videos, we're making content that's entertaining, hopefully, and, or, you know, informative, hopefully. Um, but it also, um, it, it winds up giving us a much, as, as Chris kind of mentioned earlier, it gets us directly to people that maybe are interested in our guitars. Um, and we, we've definitely, we have, uh, I'm not sure what the number is now, but uh, before YouTube, most of uh, the Driftwood guitar sales was kind of grassroots. It was yeah. people in the area. It was friends that would tell friends and it was a lot more organic. Um, like a 300 mile radius. We live in a touristy town. So you did get people from the, that kind of five hour drive radius that would buy guitars from me. But yeah. I was starting to see that drying up. Yeah. Um, and, and this has now made it so that we're selling guitars all over the world. My prices have quadrupled yeah. on my guitars. We just, we just shipped a guitar to Hong Kong. That was our yeah. first international sale. And um, the goal and that happened always, that happened only through YouTube. Only obviously. through YouTube. Yeah. And that's weird. I'm building guitars now for folks that I'll never meet that we only correspond mm -hmm. via text or email or sometimes a phone call. And, and the prices have gotten to the point where they're very, my guitars are crazy expensive for the average person. My running joke is I can't afford one either. <laughs> uh, right. But the reality of the situation is, is that it has allowed me to do this for a living because in order for me to only be able to build, which is about my maximum output is about 12 to 15 guitars a year on the acoustic side, they have to be a crazy high price in order for me to just make a living doing it, you know? And because of YouTube, I've been able to do that. And it's been really absolutely incredible. Um, and it's forced me to continue to step up, you know, as my prices went up, it's like, okay, I really got it. These guitars have to be absolutely and utterly flawless because you start to see who you're competing with. Now you're, you know, you're out there next to guys like Urban Samoji and, you know, Mishi Masuda, and these are super high end guitar builders. And like, that are also the, very prominent and, yeah. and well known in the, yeah. And they did it the old school way. They did it by going to guitar festivals and to getting inside fretboard journal magazine and acoustic guitar magazine. And like, that's the old school way of doing it, which is what I tried for years. I tried to get in the magazines and, and do all that stuff. I never did any of the trade shows. Um, but that was the only way to get your name out there. But YouTube allowed me and Matt to be able to cut that whole line. Like, I, I think that we probably saw a solid decade worth of growth in two years. Like a decade of going out there and chasing pavement and like having to get dealers and to do all of that stuff. Instead, we get to go look our customers, potential customers right in the eye and to develop from their perspective a relationship where they can feel like they they trust me, they trust the knowledge that we have. Mm -hmm. And then after consuming our, our YouTube content for months and months and months, we are a lot of the times the person who even presents the thought in their head of like, you know, I own I own like 30 guitars. 
I don't own any custom. I've never even thought about having a custom guitar made. So mm -hmm. you give them the idea. Next thing you know, like they're excited because they're you're they're the first customer or the first custom guitar they've ever had. And but they feel like they know you. And that's the real and genuine power of YouTube is that like you you get to establish that relationship. And on top of all of it, <laughs> all the other contents their platforms that are out there, you have to pay to advertise. YouTube, I get paid. It actually, yeah, we yeah. make, I mean, we don't make by any means our, our, like our, our, our income is not based off of YouTube, but our income is based off of the guitars that we sell because of YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's also, it's, it's worth mentioning. Chris, uh, said something effective, like cutting the line, which makes it sound a little bit like a cheat code. It kind of isn't because we worked so hard the first two <laughs> <What>? years. <laughs> like, like I remember there were a lot of days where I would show up to work and I would work here and we would shoot a video and then I would go home and I'd stay up until 1 a.m. editing and then I'd wake up the next day and I'd come back and be here at nine. Mm. And I was also like, I was still gigging four nights a week too. So like, and the, you know, obviously that was not sustainable. I kind of had a no. panic attack. Uh, but, but that being said, um, YouTube is one of the few places though where it's like you can still uh, just of your own volition if you're willing to you know, invest the time and energy yeah. into it. You know, that's the one thing is that you get to kind of hold the reins on what your brand and what yeah. your marketing and what your vision for the thing looks like. And that more so than anything else is the, I think that's the one really special caveat. Like, yes, you will absolutely do the work to make sure that your name and your product gets out there. But at the end of the day, it is through you. Yeah. And you don't, you don't have to go through an agency. You don't have to rely on yep. what someone else quotes you or saying you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You look at like, I know that we're like not letting you get a lot of questions in here. We're just gonna talk. No, you're good. Uh, you're good. No, but like, you, <laughs> he's like greatest guest ever know. on a podcast. Like, I, this is exactly what I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. I'll, you look I'll just at, go like, over here, take a nap. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You look yeah. at channels like um, like Anderton's, Anderton's guitars. Mm -hmm. um, anybody who consumes guitar information and gets on YouTube knows about their channel, and the, like they're a perfect example of like the power of YouTube because. In any other war, any other situation, they're just another music store who's competing with Sweetwater, and that's impossible. Instead, they're they're out there presenting their personalities as guitar guys. We're just just like you. We like equipment, and they they're not just doing gear reviews. They're doing gear reviews like honestly, like as mm -hmm. if you and me are hanging out and you're showing me some new gear you just got. Not this, the way the Sweetwater reviews a mixer is different than the way Anderton's does. And there's a mm -hmm. reason why. And Anderton's can put out a video about the new XYZ pedal and probably be sold out of all of their stock before they've even placed the order from the manufacturer of the stock. And because they get a direct line with the customer and, and because you love those guys, you might be a guy who buys your product from Sweetwater, but you're going, you know, I'm gonna buy it from Anderton's this time because I wanna support those guys. Uh, on top of that, those guys are getting paid for the views, they're getting paid for the affiliate links, they're getting all the, all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the main thing that like, taking it back to the to the first conversation with Rhett, he was like, bro, like you don't understand, like being a YouTuber can be very lucrative, but being a YouTuber who has a product to sell, that's, that's the real good good. Like that's where you can really do it. So the, the difference is, is that Matt and I are kind of constantly have to find that balance between like how much energy can we put into the YouTube side versus how much time can we put into the guitar building. Like since we've been back from Nam, where we met you, which at the time of this recording is like just over a month, right? It's yeah. like four and a half, five weeks ago. I, we haven't mm -hmm. shot any YouTube videos and I have been head down just working our butts off, building, building, building. And we're like, we're just starting to have those conversations. Like, okay, like enough time has gone by. We're starting to see that drop off on the, on the analytics. Like we need to put per, some stuff back into the system. Per our previous point, we all, we don't, we don't do best whenever we have a consistent, uh, and it's just it, it's just a fact of how our our, our our company and I say that obviously like tongue in cheek because it's two guys in a two car garage. But how our company works is whenever we do one thing, we need to do it really really well and really really hard and, and heavy for a second. And then you know as soon as as soon as that gets to a point where it's good, it, it's a little bit like spinning plates, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there will come a day though where you know we have to shoot YouTube, and then we'll probably do nothing but that for a week, mm -hmm. you know, and try and get as much content as possible. And so and the only yeah. person that we've known that has been able to perfectly marry it all is uh, JHS. Um, oh, Josh Scott. Yeah, Josh yeah he, Scott. he has people that work for him. Yeah, but the way <laughs> yeah. that he's managed to make it all work is from what I talked, you know, you talked, I know you probably interviewed him a, 
on on or talk to him at least. But like mm-hmm. from what I understand, the dude <laughs> walks in in the morning and he's got like a studio space where like he comes and they already know what they're going to talk about. He sits down in front of the camera. He does the twenty minutes in front of the camera and he's like, all right, and he leaves and he goes off with his day while somebody's going to pick up and edit it and get it all out there. Yeah, and us, we have to strike. We have to clean the shop. Yeah. We have to strike things. We have to move guitar projects out of the way for yeah. whenever we film in. So One, until we can get to a place where our workflow is more sustainable for that, that's kind of, it, it seems really inefficient and it is, but also it's just the best that we can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Now I've, I've been there. I was on a, a, one of the live streams over there and uh, it is oh. sort of like that. Like it's, it's, everything's all set up. It's ready to go. And you know, you do, you walk in and, and you can bang out an incredible amount of content when you don't have to set up and tear down every time. Like it's, it's such a, what such a, a game changer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's, sure. but it's also like you go there and you go, you're like, Wow, this is really impressive. Like yeah. it's it's really professionally set up and yep. done well and everybody's on point, you know, especially during the live streams. Some people didn't think that those were real. They thought they yeah. were pre-recorded. So and you got, you I, I'm here to tell people. you they are very real. He's really yeah. switching everything in real time and like it, it's just it's That's pretty cool. nuts. Yeah. yeah. But, I already but, have a, a but ton of But to your point, him, they have a yeah. cold crew that they all they have a whole crew that does it though. That's a, it's yeah. a and, very and, and, and they didn't start that way. Nope. But you know um, that's the situation. For it us. is easier I, these days, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, our first hire will probably be a video, a video editor. Like the day that we like, okay, we're gonna bring somebody in. Is like, okay, here's our video. <laughs> yeah. Let us know when it's mm-hmm. edited because it just that alone is just even if we could just record and, and get back to what we always call sawdust. No, we just want to make sawdust. That's what we really want to be doing. Uh, but you know, it's yeah. I always feel guilty no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm building a guitar or shooting a YouTube video, because I, sh- I could be doing the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's always something to do. Yeah. But, uh-huh. Matt, you hit on a, a, a good point, though. You know, you t- talk about maybe, like, shortcutting that process a little bit. But, you know, some people do – I'm sure you guys get this question, too. It's like, how do you how do you get to this point? How do you get to where you can, you know, do these things for a living? And I – it's a, it sounds like I'm kind of being sarcastic and maybe a little bit mean, but – I'm always like, well, it's real simple. All you have to do is work three full-time jobs for like three to four years. That's all you have That's to it. do. It's yeah. The, yeah. Dude, that is, yeah. there is, that is the truth. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things where people, I feel like you might go, yeah, you work harder is not how you get more successful. But the YouTubery is definitely, uh, the just just in general, getting your name out there on the internet, forget about YouTube. It is, it's just, you gotta be, you gotta be loud, and you gotta be, a, you gotta be the guy who's ringing the bell and saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And on top of that, you have to have a good product. Yeah, <laughs> right. You, know, so it's you can like, do all that and it still not work if the and product it, and sucks. It ob- and just like everything, it's about, you know, the fact that I know Rhett helped a lot, you know. Uh, the fact that, you know, because now I've met Rhett, we've known other people, those things help, but still, the reality of it was is that you know, you just had to put the work into the system because mm-hmm. if you don't do that, I, I know a lot of people who who um, who do make content for a couple of months and then they just go, it didn't work. And it, this is just not yeah. how it works, you know? Like it, It's for real. It's definitely, I'm going to say it's not for everybody. And and the the one of the big reasons why Chris and I work is through a, just a really series of fortunate circumstances, mostly, yep. you know? Um, and, and there's there's a lot of luck too and and so i you know i i think if anyone's going to come out here and say like oh yeah sure anyone can start a youtube channel no <laughs> no and it's yeah. and, and uh, i won't use any names but like there are other guitar building youtube channels that i've seen that i've i watch and i go wow that's a great product they're putting out great stuff and they just can't get traction and i watch it from the outside year after year and i think god that must be so frustrating yeah. And like, and I almost feel like in their case, it's no fault of their own. It's just the algorithm's not giving them that one video that gets the. You, it really is YouTube. You got to get that one video that gets a little bit of traction. We're not talking about like going viral or anything. We're talking about like it gets a hundred thousand views, you know. Yeah. And YouTube goes, "Hey, check out this guy's product." Like, mm-hmm. you know, but and that's got to be super frustrating. But then you'll also see other people, and this is just to shine a light on this the backside world of YouTube. Just because you see somebody who's got millions of views or even millions of subscribers does not mean that they have a lot of viewers. So it goes both ways in that sense, you know. Especially yeah. for companies, a lot of companies um, will have a lot of subscribers but you subscribe to a company's youtube channel for a different reason like 
like let's mm -hmm. use Martin Guitars for example. Like I might subscribe to Martin Guitars YouTube channel because I just kind of want to like be notified if they put out a new product. I'm not actually actively excited about the new video that they put out and I want to watch every second of it versus because there's mm -hmm. no personality. Um, and so yeah, it's the backside, the, the real nitty gritty dirty side of YouTube, the analytics side of it reveals a totally different picture. Um, so yeah, for us, we got, we got, we just put in the work. If we hadn't put the work in as hard as we did when we did, we wouldn't be where we are. You and know? also been a little lucky because what was yeah, that? For what sure. was that first video that you did that uh, it, it took off? It was uh, yeah, it was, it you was building, the Coca-Cola video. Uh, well, there was that, but there was also one there a video that you did where it was just a guitar. Was time it, lapse. One, yeah, the time yeah. lapse. It was I did a time it. lapse of building a guitar yeah. that did pretty well. I had actually built a guitar for a for an event that I was auctioning off this guitar, and, and I was like, oh, why don't I record every second? This is eight years ago. I'm going to record every second of it with my cell phone. I'll make a time lapse. So I made like a 40 minute time lapse. Um, it's the first video I ever uploaded to my YouTube channel, but I uploaded it to YouTube, not because I wanted to start a YouTube channel, but because I needed to be able to play it at the event. And I just really was using YouTube as a cloud service. I was like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll upload it to YouTube and then I'll be able to pull it up there and I can, I can just play it in the background behind the guitar to show off the guitar being built. Mm -hmm. And then that video got like a hundred thousand views like over time and it just had some like campy background canned apple music you know <laughs> it was awful right but that gave me a foundation to when we started making some youtube videos that at least the algorithm was going hey people have liked this guy's stuff before you know and i think that when you see channels that they put out content and good content for years and they don't get traction it's because for some reason just none of those videos are getting that one little bit of pop spark. that you need yeah. yeah you have to have the spark and yeah, so we got lucky there. And then obviously we got to work with Rhett on a video. Collaborations are so, 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 so obscenely important with YouTube and just one quick video with Rhett. I think we've only yeah. ever done three videos with him, but it's it's obscene the amount of, like one video collab with him is like a year's worth of like subscribership sometimes. It's like, yeah. really? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, like he just did that video when we were at NAMM about showcasing one of my guitars. Um, it's like, it took like, 20 minutes to shoot this whole video and like I've gotten five people on my wait list just from that one video like, <laughs> nice. yeah and that, like that's just that blows my mind like that just shows the power of of, of the you know the interwebs mm -hmm. yeah and I think YouTube's uh, you know an obvious focus for a lot of people right now and I think they do the best job out of any of the platforms at actually supporting the creators which sounds kind of mm -hmm. weird and I know that YouTube can be frustrating sometimes but not as frustrating as Meta, because no. Meta is basically a black box that yeah. like, we yeah. have. You know, you get some analytics here and there, but then you th you go to their page and you're like, well, why did this happen? And they're like, well, you should be consistent with yeah. your content. Like, yeah, also thanks, pay us sucks. I get it. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I know. Yeah. You know. No, it is. There's still some, there's still something about YouTube that feels natural. It feels like old school internet. Like that, like okay, yeah, you can just put out a good product and you'll get rewarded for it. It's not obviously. Well, they also just tell true. you, like in the back end, <laughs> yeah. if you want to get to these these points, here's what you have to hit. Yep. It's not mm -hmm. some yep. mystery as to what you have to do, yep. where you're just guessing it. Like, oh, hopefully, metal yeah. give me a blue check. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, and, and Matt know? and I are to bring it back to the guitars. We honestly are like kind of a. We know that YouTube today is YouTube today. Like don't don't count on it being exactly like it is today, two years from now, or even a year from now. Tomorrow, YouTube could change their policies and completely change the payouts, change everything. And we don't have any control over that. So you always are ready for that. You're always saying, I'm not gonna put all my eggs in that basket. But ultimately, like in three or four years, Matt and I would love to be primarily YouTubers that build five or six high-end guitars a year. Mm -hmm. And YouTube, if we we're, we're that's the that, that's the goal and then hopefully we can do that but like that's how when you asked about how important youtube has been to the business growth like that's how important it's gone it's been from like how in the heck are we going to do this to like cool like we can use this as like a super super critical you know cornerstone of our business model you yeah. know and we use it when we need to just like we use a table saw <laughs> you know what i mean it's, it's just true. like it's a tool <laughs> yeah we had we had two years where we were uh living and dying by youtube and and we were just we were working for youtube and then there was one important sit down that chris and i had uh, it's kind of a business meeting where we realized you know hey we've been making all this youtube content but in this little bit of time we have not been making as many guitars as we need to to fulfill yeah. orders and stuff and so our entire end game has been to get to a place where YouTube is one of our employees and not the other way yeah. around. And that's been mm -hmm. a, a big paradigm shift in the last year was we finally 
we come in here, we do the things we need to do. And then whenever we have the time, we make the YouTube, but uh, that gives us so much, that's so much more rewarding for our business. And that's so much more rewarding just even for our mental health yeah. overall. Yeah, you and, know? And it's kind of like, yeah. It used to be like the hundred thousand subscribers goal was like our our like our shining star on the hill, and now it's like we're gonna have ourselves a nice bottle of scotch when we hit that number. But like, sure, it's not what defines us. Like, it'll be cool, but it's not everything. All we can do speak is speak for yourself. I'm gonna like, you know how they do the Stanley Cup where they eat ice cream out of the Stanley Cup. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a Sunday right on that thing and just like eat it off the top of it. You know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and emotionally, <laughs> that silver play button yeah. is uh, yeah, and, and you that's have to a, learn how to beautiful a, button. You have to learn how to emotionally deal with YouTube, and and I know that that's this just this podcast has turned into just about YouTube, but like for us, like something I learned specifically that was for 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 what Matt and I do is that you know we make a thing, and like talking to Rhett and stuff, it's like oh yeah, it really sucks when people talk bad about in the comment section, like if you do a review on a product, and it I presented to him, I'm like yeah, but like. It's really that much harder to not take it personally when they're talking crap about the thing you made. Yeah. Like it's something like a piece of me, you know. And if somebody's like, "That's a piece of crap," it's like that hurts a lot worse than like I didn't like your take on this, you know, the new PRS Silver Sky. Hello there. I'd like to introduce you to your new best friend, the Chase Bliss Audio. Lossy. Lossy is a collaboration between Chase Blitz and Good Hertz. It's meant to give you some control over those weird digital artifacts that come with the great compressed audio. You're hearing it right now. All the changes that are taking place are strictly coming from my plane dynamics. I'm just interacting with the pedal and letting it do its thing. And some true stereo goodness. If you'd like some more details about Lossy, I invite you to head over to chaseblitzaudio.com. I think you're going to like what you find. What's up, everyone? It's Joe, and I'm the host of That's Awesome with Joe, a podcast on the newly formed Sound Talent Media Podcast Network. I talk with tons of your favorite artists, managers, touring personnel, and more. Most of the time we talk about music, but lots of the time we end up talking about something completely unrelated. We laugh a lot. We do a lot of really stupid things, but also some things that are really informative and interesting. Basically, it's a podcast that I think you should listen to. Obviously, I'm biased because it's my podcast, but I think I might be into it if I wasn't the host. Check it out at SoundTalentMedia.com. Uh, and right. now it's like, Matt, I always say we're dead inside. You can't kill what's already dead. Like, I <laughs> yeah. honestly, like the comment section is just, I, I don't even really read it all the time. Like, and I don't honestly care, but I, I still want to be connected to it. But like, yeah. you have to learn I, I how still, to I still read most of them, yourself. but yeah, I yeah. also, it's made me, it's made me a much tougher person in general. Like, it, you know, on the off chance that someone like, you know, says something in real life, they come up to me and, and they'll, they'll say something, you know, mean to me and I'll be like, cool. You're entirely entitled to that opinion. <laughs> you know, like, cool, bro. Like, have you been on the internet lately? Because yeah. that's that's my Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and it can be I, beneficial because you do have you know building guitars like you. Oh man, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. So you go five, six, seven, eight years, and you've never heard anything other than you're amazing at what you do. But you get on the right. internet, and all of a sudden it's like. <laughs> you know, and you get you get taken back to earth real quick, and like you you realize like. Yeah. Some of that stuff that has some bearing to it, you know. Blake, but. just out of curiosity, uh, is there is there a particular comment that lives rent free in your head? Does someone say anything about you that uh, it used to like I used to be like not even like on camera. Uh, everything was just like about the gear and the pedal, right. and I, yeah. I was like I don't even want to be on camera. That was for that for years on Instagram. That's how it was. Yeah, just on Instagram. Um, okay. But I mean, no, it's it's gotten better, and then sometimes like they leave, they might live rent free, but it's because I think they're funny. You know, oh, yeah. it's like less less that it hurts and more that I thought it was funny. And sure. one of those lately, um, I guess it could be taken as hurtful, but I I really genuinely thought it was funny was um, someone was like, I've been binging the podcast for a month and this is the first time I've seen your face. Uh, you don't look anything like what I imagined. Sad face. 
<laughs> Brutal. <laughs> the sad thing. I was like, yeah. I was listening to that. I was like with him. I was like, okay, all right, all right, all right, cool. And then when I read the sad, sad. face, yeah. I was like, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, they gave me the crying face emoji, like the one where the tears are streaming yeah. down. And I was like, well. Your yeah, voice is way more just... handsome than you are. Yeah. I guess so, which, I mean, I'll take that. That might be true. Oh, God. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like, awful, I don't know what you... Yeah. I don't know what you thought I looked like. I mean, yeah, well, were you picturing Brad Pitt in 1995? I'm not sure exactly. what you were imagining exactly, Speaking but uh, club, yeah. <laughs> yeah. turns out I'm a giant nerd. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The, the guy that has a uh, podcast about guitar pedals is a nerd. Who saw that coming? <laughs> yeah, weird, right? I thought yeah. he was going to be super, super cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nick Steamy over here talking about, tell me more about your guitar gear. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing my wife likes better than when i just like bust out a fresh new Boss vintage pedal. whatever <laughs> anything really it doesn't matter look at this tone bender bark too baby it's so cool <laughs> yeah oh man yeah yeah um uh, well that really flew by we're we're knocking on the door of the hour mark um and i do have the classic questions uh, that i like to ask before we we sign off here but before I do that, I like to give the guest, guest, the guest. I like to give the guest um, the <laughs> the chance to take the floor and say anything they want to say. Shout out anybody they want to shout out. Um, okay. Thanks, thank thanks anything so you much. Uh, <laughs> thank you. You guys, you guys have been great guests. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you, first of all, for having us. I just want to say. Um, I've, I've been a big, big fan of the show for um, uh, the the two weeks that that I that, that you invited us, two weeks ago that you invited us on. But I really, I really have been listening, and, I, and I, I'm going to continue just because, yeah, I love this format. I love everything you do. So thank you, first of all, for having us. And um, yeah, if you guys out there haven't been to our YouTube channel, uh, we are Driftwood Guitars on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Go like our Instagram. We try and make pretty pictures of things. And uh, yeah, yeah, and this thing has been really cool for us because we we. We we met you at Nam, uh, twenty twenty four Nam, and like we've gotten we just, we just now in the last like year started coming out of our hole of, of being in our shop. Like I can't sure. I can't overstate how small of a town we live in. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like we live in the middle of nothing, and it's been really cool meeting other creators, not just YouTubers, but like people like you, people who are all more active on Instagram than anything else or whatever. And like we're all like equally as passionate, and we're all kind of the same way. We're all kind of sitting around going. Can you believe people are like watching what we're doing? And like, it's kind of weird that like in, in any way that people like are actually like tuning in, and it's just really, it's just really cool, man. So yeah. we appreciate you having us. And, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, mm -hmm. Blake. Um, obviously, this this offer, um, you know, this this stands. If you're ever in the Panhandle, Florida, please come see us. Stop by the shop. We'd love to <laughs> love to have you. Also, I know you're a bit of a gym guy, so if you want to spot me, I, I could I could use the help. You know, like maybe help my form a little bit. <laughs> Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm out here trying, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not anywhere. Like I don't have your, your kind of gains, but you know, if you, uh, oh. if, if, if you could, uh, if you could maybe like, if I could book a session with you, that's all I'm saying, you know, like, you, I'll, you, need a form, I'll, you know, a little form check. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll set up one of your guitars in exchange. We do like an even swap. How about that? You know, oh, I like this. I, now this is a business I can get behind. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't. I, to being being totally brutally honest, I don't know that I'm gonna be in the Panhandle of Florida no. at any point. No, you really but, should. Um, you should. Yeah, yeah, there's no good reason to. But <laughs> if you ever are, just you know, the offer yeah. stands. Yeah, we're pretty beaches. I will be yeah. going to Nashville in like a month and a half. That's about, okay. probably about as close as I uh, yeah. as I get. This is usually Nashville. Well, we'll wait at you from down here. Because <laughs> that's where Stringjoy is, right? You go up there for them. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We go in there to, you know, have a little. Have a little circling of the wagons with everybody and figure out what the heck is going on with the with the camera crew. Sometime yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And do a string joint. Oh, show. dude, we would love that. That'd be super Lo cool. Yep, yep. We would absolutely love that. Red yeah, Red actually came by one year and did that too. So you know, nice. the more the awesome. merrier. I love yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, classic questions. Here we go. And I know, like at that dinner, there was only like two pedal guys there, but I got to ask you guys the question anyway. What is your favorite boss pedal? 
<laughs> oh my god. I love this. Mm -hmm. I gotta go first because you're gonna have a deeper well to pull for okay. probably the right. funny that Matt the fiddle player has more experience with the pedals. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's my um it's the the, the octave the, oh, the OC five. The OC five. O C five, yeah. I'm yeah. A I so I had the OC two that somebody gave me. It might have been OC one, like from forever ago. But somebody mm -hmm. like, oh, da, da, you gotta try this out. And you know, it sounded okay, but it was single note, not super polyphonic. Matt actually got the OC three. Five. Five, I'm sorry. The OC yeah. five. Because there's a difference. <laughs> and uh Oh yeah, and and he was like, we we're at a gig one time. He's like, no, bro, like you can do like just the low strings, and I'm like, hold the phones. So I got one of those, and I have been using the crap out of it for my solo gigs. I can make it sound like I have an upright bass player, just just barely there. But then when I play with the band, just getting that thing sound like an organ is just yeah. super fun too. So that's mm -hmm. been my favorite boss pedal. Yeah, um, I, I gotta say, my uh, I love the OC5 too, and if he hadn't just said that, that would probably be mine too. Okay, because okay, here's the thing, I've actually, I've played electric violin, um, and just for people playing along at home, I actually, I don't really play much guitar. I'm the world's most okayest guitar player, so, uh, you know, the irony that I'm building guitars, you know, is palpable, but yeah, I've, I've played electric fiddle in a rock band, like I, I, for a while I was in a, like a classic rock cover band, and I did all the electric guitar parts Marshall, and solos. Marshall Halfstack. Yeah, 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 like the whole nine, so I love mm -hmm. running through effects. But that, that boss has a special place in my heart for all the reasons that, you know, uh, people, fans of that pedal know. But uh, just because he said that, I'm going to go with something slightly different. Um, there was a, a, and this is more of a, like an anecdotal personal thing. There was the boss, um, uh, it's like the, the seven band EQ, I think, or the five band EQ. Uh, which the, one is Their graphic EQ pedal? Yeah, I think it's yeah, the graphic EQ. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and the reason I'm going to proffer that one is because I had a gig where I was playing, uh, I was playing acoustic violin, and I had the most god awful uh, ambient room, just uh, frequency like hum. And uh, a buddy of mine, he had an extra graphic EQ pedal in his backpack, and he pulled it out. And not only was I able to find, like you know, I was able to dial that one pitch out, but I also used it as a mid boost for solos. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, okay, that was kind of like a watershed moment for me. I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. I should really learn more about this. So thank <laughs> yeah. you, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, th thank you, Boss Graphic EQ, for um, you know for getting my uh, getting my feet wet yeah. in that world, and also um, like I hate you for the pedal addiction that, that we all have now because that was that was my that was my gateway drug, you know. <laughs> so yeah, you know, I'm I'm good friends with Wampler, and he's always talking about like if you find a pedal that you really like the the way it breaks up and the amount of headroom it has and all that, yeah, and you're like good with that. Get an EQ pedal, put it in front of it or behind it, whatever. You can have almost any dirt pedal you can think of if you oh, yeah. know what you're doing with sense. the EQ pedal, which Absolutely. is, you know, yeah, weird for me to accept as somebody that has hundreds of dirt pedals. But, um, you know, <laughs> exactly. it, it's yeah. fine. There, there, it's an investment. It, it's not, yeah, <laughs> it it's, not, uh, yeah. It, it's not really good for his business model, but we take it nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He does a lot of things that aren't good for his business model. <laughs> Brian, I love you. You know it's true. And I know you're never going to listen to this because you're not. Um, <laughs> well, let's get on to the final question. I'd be curious what uh, some Florida panhandlers think about this, but what is your favorite kind of pizza? Oh, God. Do you want to you take no, this one first, too? For Matt's, a, Matt's a, a foodie, so. Yeah, okay. I, um, I'm going to say this. My favorite pizza, and I'm going to get some hate for this. But I'm also going to explain the context around it again, kind of like the graphic EQ pedal. Because I've done New York pizza in New York. Um, there's a really good restaurant here that uh, in Freeport, actually, that it's a Chicago pizza, and it's run by a man that lives in Chicago. So yeah. it's, it's, it's authentic. So I've had the deep dish. But I think one of my favorite pizzas that I've ever had was actually St. Louis, the Emo's pizza. It's out there. Have you ever I've heard of it? Have you had this delicacy? I've never been there. Okay, so it's... it's <laughs> and. Uh, it's culinarily, I think it, it's it's just okay. It has actually this, um, what's the name? It's a processed cheese. Is this the one with cheese. the, I was going to say, they put the cold processed cheese on top, right? Yeah, it, that, it's, it's something thinking... that's like provolone adjacent. And it, it's, it, it, it sort of sticks to the roof of your mouth like napalm, honestly. <laughs> um, and, and it's like, it's sort of like if American and provolone cheese had a baby. But um, the reason I'm going to say that is because I, 
a couple of years back, I went up and recorded an album in St. Louis with some friends of mine. And I was like, I, I was just, I was just bumming around up there and I was like crashing up people's couches and I had the time of my life. And I think I ate more Emo's pizza than anyone else there over that entire week, just because it was like cheap and always <laughs> close by. Yeah. But I had the time of my life up there. And that, that Emo's pizza for me will always be how I, one of the, like one of the linchpins of that memory. And if yeah. I ever eat that pizza again, I'll be able to always go back to that week that I spent Damn. in St. Louis. So that's that for me, I'm going to go with that. I don't have as good that's of fair. an answer. Like for me, it's it's not even a specific like place. It's it's well, like there's a place in Pensacola. It's called the Tuscan Oven that makes like as far as I um, we went to Italy years ago. My wife and I. It's the closest I've gotten to that. And they make like just the, the best like brick oven like margarita style with like the best freshest cheese, the best sauce, and the best tomatoes and a little bit of basil. And it's just the best clean pizza. That's kind of where if I was going to pick a pizza right now. He's talking about Domino's, by the way. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh It's like just a really good, like, I like, we do pizza parties at the house all the time. We call it the BYOD, bring your own, no, BYOT, bring your own toppings. We have big uh, pizza nights at the house. And I always end up liking the pizzas that I expect to not like the most. Yeah, I think culturally, if you live in a place that's a big city, you have options for pizzas. Here we we have uh, Hungry Howie's. We just just now, in the last six months, we got the Chicago. Chicago place, which is, is really good. You got Pizza Hut just recently. Yeah, we, and we have a Pizza Hut, but that's kind of it. So it's not like we have a pizza that has a cultural identity or anything nearby to us. Yeah. So honestly, the best pizza that we can do that has any real bearing on our lives and our lifestyles is probably just whatever we make. Yeah. Seafood, seafood mm-hmm. we got you covered, but pizzas, it's slim pickings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But excellent question, nonetheless. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you guys have the legendary little Cesar, you know, oh, like I'm sure do. that's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cesar. Poquito, Poquito Cesar, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cesar Poquito, I guess, technically. Sorry, my yeah. Spanish is Yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we... I we, haven't had that in so long. We have, uh, we also, we, we uh, you know, the, the, the Howie that is hungry, if you, you will. you guys have yeah. hungry Howies mm-hmm. out, out west? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's... That was all we had for a solid decade out here. Yeah, so, you know, you can have any pizza you want as long as you wanted hungry Howies. <laughs> so, I've never even had hungry Howies. I've yeah. seen a Hungry Howie's, Listen, but I've good. never had it. I just got burned out on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is such thing. You can no longer be hungry for Hungry Howie's. You at one point, yeah, <laughs> D- diminishing returns. How- Howie's has got really good sandwiches. Like if you get their hot sandwiches, like they're so super good. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming on. Thanks for hanging out. I really enjoyed the chat. Hopefully, people took a couple nuggets out of there and yeah. helps understand like what in the heck you guys do a little better, which was my goal. So thank yeah, you guys for it. taking the time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Man. Thank you so much for having us. dude. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, everybody for Chris and Matt, this is Blake. And as always folks, good luck and good tones. All right, folks, there you have it. There's another episode in the can. If you could, I would appreciate it. And I know the fellows would too. Go give those guys a subscribe. If you haven't already, they're on the road to hundred K and I'd like to see him hit it as soon as possible. And while you're at it, give your old buddy Blake a sub as well, because, you know, I'm small, both in height and in YouTube channel size. Anyway, moving on swiftly, if you enjoyed this episode, please check out the Patreon, because we talked more. We talked aliens, we talked some weird stuff, and I really, really had a good time over there, and I think you're going to like it. There is bonus episodes that get published every single week over there, So if you like this episode, you like this podcast, you like the vibe, it just gets weirder over on Patreon. So if that's your thing, please slide over there. Five bucks a month gets you access to all of that stuff, and it also gets you access to the ad-free feed. If you would prefer to hear this without the advertising, which I totally understand, you can do that on Patreon as well. So thank you all so much for supporting. Thank you for listening to this podcast, and please, as always, tell a friend about it if you could. I would really appreciate that. That's what keeps this thing going more than anything is you sharing this with people who you think would like it. So if you got a friend group that's really into guitars or music stuff that you think this would bring some value to their lives, force them to listen to it. Sit them down, tie them to a chair, and force... Okay, don't do that. I'm totally... Totally don't do that. That'd be bad. I think that's probably not legal in any state or country. Don't do that. But you should still force them to listen somehow. Trap them in a car with you on a road trip. Tell them you're going to take them to, you know, I don't know, the, the panhandle of Florida and, and uh, you know, experience the swamp life or something. And, and uh, then you just listen to this podcast the whole time. That's not weird. Anyway, I'll talk to you all on the internet very soon. Thank you for everything. One last thing before we totally sign off here. I just want to remind you 
that if you do any shopping at Stringjoy, that's Stringjoy Guitar Strings made in Nashville, that will help me out as well. As I've said for years, I'm heavily involved in that company, and I really do think they're making the best products on the market. So if you would like to try custom strings, go to ToneMob.com slash Stringjoy and check them out today. I seriously, seriously, seriously love what the team down there is doing. I help them out with all kinds of things, and by you supporting them, you are also supporting me as well. And hey, you need some strings, so why not get some custom strings just for your guitar and playing style? Again, the link for that is ToneMob.com slash Stringjoy, and that will take you right to their website, and you can do all your shopping through there, and that will help everyone involved out. So thank you very much. Talk to you next time. We are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Gun Street Wiring Shop. Yes, Gun Street Wiring Shop. I've talked about them before. I used to say based out of Bend, Oregon, but guess what? Sean moved to my neck of the woods. Sean's in Portland. Sean is awesome and has helped me with a bunch of stuff lately. And if you have wiring needs for your guitar, he can help you too. If you want to get weird with it, he can get weird. If you just need to spruce things up a little bit, there's your guy. He takes all the guesswork out of doing your guitar wiring, and he makes it simple, and his customer service is top-notch, and I can't say enough good things about Gunstreet as a company. I really respect Sean and what he's all about, and the product is top-notch. I've got three different guitars that now have Gunstreet harnesses in them, and I could not be happier. So go to GunstreetWiringShop.com and check them out. Hey, what's up? My name's Lurk, and I'm the host of Lamb Goat's Van Flip Podcast. Every week, I have in-depth conversations with bands from all over the scene, big and small. We also like to keep our finger on the pulse and showcase up-and-coming bands on the show as well. So come check out Lamb Goat's Van Flip Podcast. The number you have reached is 100.7 WMMS. It wasn't just a radio station, it was a lifestyle. It is a rock and roll city for sure. I feel like the was... Get down! The rise and fall of one of the most iconic radio stations in America. Profiles, The Wrath of the Buzzard, P-R-O-H Files. Subscribe now wherever you get podcasts.